Hola, Reyes Reinas, Hikings and Queens. I pray that today I find you excited. I am excited in the spirit to get into today's word. Uh, I am not feeling well, so if you look at me, like, seriously, my eyes feel heavy. Um, I did do my makeup and my hair because I was like, no, I need to bring today's word. And I have some other things that I need to take care of today. Um, however, keep me in prayers for health. I don't know what's going on with me. I am taking um, medicines. However, I got snot coming on my nose. And um, just forgive me if it happens. <laughs> I have to put something to clog it up. However, um, bear with me today, especially with my voice. I am healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I pray that I find you excited. Although I don't look excited, I am in the spirit because I was studying this word yesterday. And it was giving me great revelation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, restore my voice. Renew our minds, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your wisdom, your revelation, your clarity, Lord. We thank you, Father, that as we thinketh in our hearts, so we are. And we thank you for renewing our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Renewing right now even our thoughts, Lord. Whatever it is, renewing our health, our wealth in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Thank you for your peace, your protections, your presence, Father, more than anything. Your partnerships, your protection, your peace. And your prosperity in Jesus' mighty name, Father. Thank you for your uncommon, unearned, unexplainable, undeserved, preferential treatment, Father. But more than me, thank you for your grace. We honor you, Father, for your grace. We thank you for air in our lungs. We thank you for, even if we're sick, your healing us in Jesus' name. We honor you, Lord, and we thank you for your word today. Thank you for le never leaving us, but thank you for forever changing us and renewing us when we have this intimate time with you, Father. And may your word in Jesus' name accomplish everything and anything that you sent it to do today and every day that we read your word, Father. We are one with you. We're in agreement, and we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, thank you for activating in us, Father, and deactivating what needs to be deactivated, Father. And let's dive into today's word. Uh, today, we're reading from Proverbs 23, 7. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Proverbs 23, 7, which reads, As a man think, thinks in his heart, so is he. This has been um, a scripture that I forever live by, that I've known it since I don't even know how long. Um, I've always remembered and tried to uh, remind myself that as I think it, I will become. Who I hang around with, I will become. Who um, I'm around, whether they inspire me or activate me or deactivate me, it's what I'm going to become. So it's important that today... We realize how important this word is. Um, <clears throat> and today's title is Reshaped by God. Um, what stood out to me when I was reading this scripture is as a man thinks in his heart. And here it has um, captions around as a man. So we are man. We signify man. But as you think it is how we will talk. How we think is how we will forgive. How we think is going to affect how we think. How we grace others. How we don't grace others. How we act how we offend, how we don't offend, um, how we take things. So it's important that we recognize that. Um, but what God has been putting in my heart and I've been learning is that grace, how we think, are we filled with grace? Because how we think and feel about grace is how we're going to extend grace to others. And grace definition biblically is God's unearned favor and ability, unmerited ability. Grace is what gives us what we don't deserve. Um, and there's different cases of grace, but that scandalous and radical grace that surpasses human understanding is the grace that the Lord gives us, that God gives us. We could be dead because of things that we did in the past. However, we're alive. We're here today. Um, right now, I'm sick. I could, you know, not go live because I'm really not feeling well. However, I know grace is God's grace is sufficient enough. God's grace. I still have my voice. I still have my thought. I still have my brain. Many people can say like, oh, you know, I have ideas and strategies. Yeah. Who gave you those ideas and strategies? God. <clears throat> Many people don't believe that. I do. However, let's dig into today's word. Another thing that I want you to remember that I learned not too long ago is we're born like our parents, but how we die is by our decisions. So let that marinate with you. I don't know. Somebody did say that. I don't know who it was that said. I can't quote you the name. So forgive me for that. But I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus that we have freedom in our minds and our hearts and our spirits. Anywhere that we need freedom, I pray that the Lord grants us that. And that we seek him to continue living in freedom. Because if we want grace and we want freedom and we want love and we want the fruits of his Holy Spirit, we have to be activated by him to experience those. We can talk about them, learn about them, but we will not truly experience them unless he frees our minds. Unless we unlearn things that we've learned in our minds and we learn things that he's called us to learn. So 
In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you for it activating and accomplish everything you called it to accomplish and sent it for. In Jesus' name, let me begin. Proverbs twenty thirty seven: As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Reshaped by God is our title today. Have your way, Lord. Great God that you are. Many people believe that who we are is a result of our upbringing, socioeconomic background, education, gender, or ethnicity. Of course, those factors help shape us. But our sense of who we are also comes from what we think about our background, circumstances, and experience. Amen. Bring it, Holy Spirit. So we have to ask ourselves, is our thinking accurate and helpful? Is it based on the things that aren't true? Is it based on lies? If you are feeling discouraged and stuck in a place of hurt, ask the Lord to help you first to evaluate the thoughts behind those feelings and then to make changes that will move you toward truth, freedom, and wholeness in Jesus' name. For us, our hearts to be examined. That's one thing the Lord's been revealing to me is I've been asking God to reveal my heart, examine my heart so no harm, no um, evil will come out of it. So I need to be healed. So I'm asking God to examine my heart to show me things. You end you end unhealthy thinking by replacing it with God's healing truth. You can read more on this on 2 Corinthians chapter 10. God reaches out to you through his word, inviting you to believe the truth found there and applying it to your life. You are loved, period. You are seen, period. <clears throat> and your father will help you renew your mind and nurture it in a way only he can. Yes, Father, renew our minds, but nurture our minds. Help us to be hungry, Father, for your ways, your life, your word, in Jesus' name. As you read God's word today, compare what it says to what you think. If they don't agree, then exchange any of your wrong thinking for his truth. Let his word reshape you and your thoughts. Amen. Maybe you're looking at your bank account right now and it looks like you're insufficient. But that is just a fact for the moment. That is not the truth. That is going to teach you if you seek and surrender wisdom and knowledge, revelation, and like clarity. Jesus, bring it, Holy Spirit. And how to make proper investments. How to eliminate debt. How not to get into debt. How to avoid debt. I'm telling you, Proverbs will reshape your mind and will give you a different perspective and ideas and strategies on how to create wealth so therefore you won't live in debt. Um, I will tell you that um, as I was studying about grace, because grace is one thing that I think that we need to have in our hearts so therefore we can think on it. We can meditate. The spirit of grace only comes by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and um, there's some scriptures here that if you need your mind to be renewed, um, these are things, these are scriptures that can help you. So Romans 12, 2 is how we can transform and renew our minds. What is that scripture? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We want God's will, not our own will. The second one is, I'm looking at my notes, give me one minute. The second one is 2 Corinthians. Ten five, I think that's the one, I think. <clears throat> Sorry. And this one is 10 5 is to take capture of anything. Take capture of any thought. Take capture. If you have something that you're thinking on and it's just putting you in some form of darkness or putting you into something where you feel like sorry for yourself or you feel like you've been victimized. Um, it's telling us to demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive of every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We studied this um, this scripture in a devotional a couple of days ago. I don't know what was the title of that one. But um, these are, I think, 10 of them. So the next one is Psalm 1-2. And this one is going to teach us to meditate which is blessed are the ones who d blessed are the blessed is the one who does not walk or step in the way of the wicked stand in the way of sinners or take sit in the company of mockers but those who delight in the law of the lord and who meditates it day and night meditate meaning read your word meditate on it day and night i come to god in prayer i don't know how many times in a day anytime that worry wants to like take captive of my thoughts i'm like lord let me pray about it because the minute that I pray about it, I surrender it to God. And that's where Jesus Christ takes it and requests and puts it against with God. So I consider it done. I'm learning that amen is as it's so in agreement. <clears throat> um, the third one is Proverbs 4.23. <clears throat> 
and uh it is to guard your heart that's important as we guard our mouths with things that we don't want to say to offend people but it's guard your heart um guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life keep vigilant and watch over your heart that's where life starts in your heart is how you think how you speak if you got bitterness it will come out in how you speak seriously i've heard people talking i learned where god has told me like just be quiet be still and you will learn so much from people by the way they talk, by the way they post, by the way they think. You will learn so much. And I'm learning now that I just want to I just want to listen more than I speak in some areas. And that has been something that I've had to work on. <clears throat> so the fifth one is Proverbs. For, uh, I'm sorry, the sixth one is Philippians, which is to fix your thoughts. Um, it's kind of about like capture any thought. But let me let me go into it. I'm sorry. I'm like in slow motion, so thank you for bearing with me because I seriously do not feel good. However, but God. <clears throat> and it says, Philippians 4, 8. This one can renew your mind as well. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If these are any virtue and that there be any praise to consider, continuously think on these things think on what's honest think on whatsoever is pure sometimes we're gonna have some honest thoughts that are going to hurt us or make us feel a certain way but that's because god is holding us accountable think on the things think on the promises and things he says these are scriptures that will help renew your mind and encourage you um the next one is first peter second nine and that's basically reminding us that god chose us <clears throat> Which is, but you are chosen people. I love this. I love this scripture. I've put it as one of my profile um, pictures. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Maybe you feel like you're still in darkness. Remember, he called you. You are chosen. You are chosen for such a time as this. Psalm 139, 13 is talking about how God knows us in our wombs. Um, basically, letting us know that... Yes, we were conceived by our parents, um, but he knew us in our minds. But God, I always say but God because it reminds me that like no matter what I'm facing, but God, there's not there's not like a period. It's but God all the time to me. For you created my in, inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that I am full well. I am full well in Jesus name. Amen. Um, this is another one I've never really read in um, Zephyr, Zephyrian, if I'm, protect, um, if I'm pronouncing it right. <clears throat> and that is the scripture that is reminding us of he's delighting in us. And it's um, Zephyrian 3, 17. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take de great delight, not just delight. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but rejoice over you with singing. If God is rejoicing us over singing, we need to be doing the same over um, people around us, loving our neighbors. The next one is um, his children, reminding us that we are his children. Therefore, he will provide. Have our parents provided for us? He will provide for us. <clears throat> And it's see what great love Father has lavished us on us that we should be called children of God. Exclamation point. That we should be called children of God. Bring it Holy Spirit. The next one is Ephesians 1 7. And I believe this is the last one. I, I really hope that these are blessing you. Because when I was like studying them and reading on it, I was like, wow, there, there's just a lot of scriptures that give us so much activation and we have no idea. Um, this is our freedom. So Ephesians 1, 7, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He died for us. He paid the price for us. How many of us have had debt cleared up by someone else paying for it or them? You're getting a bill and be like, oh, you don't have to pay this month's phone bill. You don't have to pay this month's line bill. It's like, what? It's a relief. We are sins. They've already been paid for. So whatever it is that you're going through, through guilt, regret, shame. No, come on. Bring in Holy Spirit. He takes delight in us. He knows what we've done. It's not an excuse or a permission slip to continue in sinning and behaving the way that we do. It's basically, there's a period. I've always talked about how there's a window of, there's an expiration date. There's a window of opportunity where God calls us to act on something or stop sinning, stop doing that, stop driving home drunk. I, for one, have been one person that has drove and driven drunk. And I would realize that God got me home. 
I could have killed someone. I could have killed myself. But there was a certain period where I had to learn that there was only a grace period. If I continued in these actions, there was going to be harmful. I mean, there was going to be just as he gives us scandalous and radical grace. He will give us scandalous and radical consequences. It's not even him giving it to us. It's us living life the way we want to live and life will life on you. You know, and, and I'm realizing that all of these things that I was doing, yes, there's favor on my life for the good to protect me. But when I'm out of his will and out of his grace, who's going to protect me? I'm not going to protect myself. I've noticed we are our, our own worst enemy. If it's saying here as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, in his mind, in his spirit, that's what we will be. If we go out, get drunk. We go out, we get high. If we're out sleeping around with different people. I'm using these examples because these are things that we could be addicted to and we don't even know. People think that, oh, because you're on drugs, you're addicted. There's many things that we're addicted to. Some of us are addicted to social media. There's Some of us are addicted to having things. They don't. We don't have them. They have us. A relationship has us. We don't have them. Does that make sense? However it is that you think, you will become. And this is important for you to get your spirit examined, your heart examined, your brain, your um, your body examined. So therefore you can surrender it. Um, so I'm praying in Jesus name that this blessed you today. I have other notes here um, because there's different types of grace. There's uh, four types of grace. I'm learning. There's common grace, which is for everybody. Um, there's second, a saving grace. Um, that's a privient grace, which is basically an aspect of grace. Um, saving grace, meaning you were saved as in I, when I would drive home drunk or if I did something sinfully and I knew it was wrong and I still lived by it or my spirit could be dying from some decision that I keep on making, but God will save me. But why is what I'm learning is he saves us from things because we have a purpose. Every fruit of the Holy Spirit is tied into our purpose, what we're called to do in this life. Um, so if you're saved, why did he save you? There's a purpose. There's an intentionality behind why he saved you. There's something you're supposed to be creating, serving, and fulfilling in Jesus' name. The third one is an enabling grace, which that one, um, and we can endure things. We can go through things and, and come out different. Like right now, I am sick. How do I have makeup on? How is my hair did? Because I said, but God, I'm going to get dressed today. I'm going to um try to get myself better i did rest yesterday excuse me and it's not um i gotta be if i could walk around with cute tips in my nose right now i probably would um forgive me i'm sorry about it but enabling grace is is going to enable us it's going to like basically empower us to go through seasons of our life and we're not going to look like it just like um the the sons that went through the fire and they came out and they didn't have nothing burn on them they didn't even smell like smoke if you read your bible you'll find that story about how they went into the lion's den um, the fourth one is empowering grace, which is that's for us to grow spiritually. That means that right now I may be sick. I'm taking my medicines. I rest. That is how I am empowering myself physically to try to get myself back. I didn't go to the gym today. Oh my God, that breaks my heart. But I was like, you know what? Today I feel tired. I feel exhausted. I'm not going to go to the gym. I need to empower my health. So that is how God empowers us to the spirit. He calls us to, to he calls us to study him, read his word, meditate on him, these renewing, so he can empower us to endure troubles, tribulations, trials, mourning, loss, a relationship loss. We're going through it, but we're not going to look like it. Thank you, Father. Um, and there was one more thing that I wrote that I really wanted to share. And it's if, um, and I was talking about when it's grace, if it's not presence, um, and if we're going through something right now, we're powerful in it. We have to meditate on his word as the scriptures that gave you as an example for you to study on. There's another thing is that he can't protect what he didn't direct. If you are going about and doing decisions on your own because you have this mentality and this thought process where you're like, no, I could do this. I'm going to do it my way. He can't protect what he didn't direct. So it's important for us to have our hearts right with him. <coughs> Excuse me. Because as we think of in our heart is what will become and it will alter. It will help us make decisions or it will hurt us in making decisions. So remember that as you think, you will act. As you think, you will forgive. As you act, as you think, you will offend. As you hurt, you're going to hurt others. If you're in the process of hurting, but you're still helping healing others, that means that you're thinking in your heart as the way God has called you to. Thank you, Father, for your word. Let me go on to today's prayer. Lord God, thank you for freeing me as I renew our minds. Thank you, Father, for freeing us as we renew our minds with your word. Mm. Thank you, Father, for its sent and it will do and accomplish in our lives. Thank you for your truth in exchange for every lie I've ever believed. Father, thank you, Father, for your truth. Always, excuse me, overriding any lie we hear from the lying enemy. He deceives us. 
Another prayer is, God, thank you for your word that it guides us, that it guides me. So please deepen our understanding of scripture so that I or we can clearly know your will. As we draw near to you, please show us what plans and desires we need to surrender and which ones we should pursue and which ones to surrender and which ones we should just not go through. In Jesus' name, amen. So I pray that I bless you. Um, if you don't have a relationship with God, you can repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, we repent of our sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in our lives. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and help me to forgive myself, Lord. Thank you for reshaping our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I pled the blood of Jesus each over each and every one of you that is listening to me. If you prayed that simple prayer, put God first. If you need a Holy Bible or devotional, please reach out to me and I will get you on God's feet. And remember that you're born like your parents, but we die and we look like our decisions that were made throughout our life. You're a king or queen. Reign responsibly. Think responsibly. Protect and, and heal your heart responsibly. So therefore, you can help heal others. Don't continue on with harm from rejection or um just any evil that you have in your heart if you want freedom from that surrender to god create a relationship with him seek his word meditate it and may your mind be renewed responsibly king or queen i'm praying for you i'm in agreement with you and thank you for your time today um remember that you will not receive elevation and advancement without grace being manifested in your life so god bless you thank you for your time today reign responsibly god is at work today yesterday and he's at work tomorrow what are you working on so what what one thing to ask yourself is what do you think in your heart about you or what do you think about in your heart about god god bless you i'll see y'all tomorrow please keep me in prayers in jesus name i'll be healed tomorrow god bless you i'll see y'all soon bye